Peaceful here, got another deck guide for you. So there's a lot of sentiment right now in the metagame about Loki and Eliath decks, how they are dominating, how they seem to be the two best strategies that you should be doing. And I wanted to present you all with an alternative because I think people tend to, when there's certain decks in the metagame that people feel are overpowered, people just seem to stop really thinking through what like actually is possible and thinking through how they can actually beat certain things. So I wanted to present you with a deck that I have seen have a ton of success against those decks in particular, and that I have seen have a ton of success just in general in the metagame. And that is Evo Lockdown. This list in particular, I want to give a big shout out to W and uh, his team. Uh, I believe it was Collins uh, was on his team as well for the Johnson Cup. This was his list from that. I have not changed anything for it. And I just wanted to present it to you because I think this deck has the tools to beat anything in the metagame and is actually very strong into the listed decks, Loki and Eliath. So before we get too far into it, I just wanted to say if you enjoy this kind of content, please make sure you uh, subscribe. If you uh, don't mind, like the video, comment down below what other deck guides you like to see, what you think about this deck in particular. It really helps me out. I really appreciate giving y'all's feedback. I love having a conversation and being able to help you out with certain things. So make sure you do that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to sort of talk about why I think this deck is so good. So here is the deck. And as you can see, it says W Johnson Cup. This is not my deck. I, you know, a lot of times I present y'all with my my preferred list or my list that I've tweaked in a certain way. This is not. This is their list from the Johnson Cup that was just absolutely crushing people. And uh, as you can see, this is a pretty stock lockdown list. Uh, before the Spider-Man change, I wouldn't even call it a nerf, the Spider-Man rework, this, uh, this deck was probably the best deck in the game. Just running Spider-Man over... Um, I can't even, I'm not even sure what you would take out in this. I guess one of the one drops maybe or one or Medusa. But either way, obviously Spider-Man has changed and does not work the same way in this deck anymore. But this is uh, was one of the best decks in the game for a long time. And it turns out it's still pretty good. Storm early into something like Cyclops or Medusa into Storm is just a very powerful combo. And one thing I do want to note here before we go into it further, one of the really nice things about high Evo decks in particular is Loki gives you cards from your opponent's starting deck. And the starting deck for this has a default Misty Knight, has a default Hulk. It does not have the upgraded cards. Same thing with Cyclops. So though some of the other cards are useful, those in particular are not going to be as good as they are for you because they are going to get a 3-4 Cyclops. They are not getting the Cyclops with the passive ability that this one has from the high Evo. So that is something to keep in mind. It does help a lot in that matchup. It gives you a little bit more power than what they're going to be getting, even though they are getting the discount on the cards. Now, the reason I think this deck is so good is because with the Storm Plan, the Storm Plan is very good into the Eliath decks because that just locks down a lane for you and then makes it very hard for them to know where they need to Eliath on the last turn. The other thing that I really like about this deck against Eliath is Doctor Doom. So you go Wave on turn five, Dr. Doom on turn six, and you can play the Dr. Doom basically wherever you need to in order to play around Eliath. And they have to basically guess and hope that they guess right. Uh, and a lot of times you can just win anyway, even if they even if they do guess right, because you are, you know, you're a deck that plays proactively. The other nice thing you can do against Eliath decks that I actually have had that I've used to great effect a couple of times is Sunspot, right? So you let's say they put you into a situation where they think they can get you with Eliath. And instead of playing a card on turn six, you just pass. The sunspot grows by six. And a lot of times you can win a lane that way. And, you know, six is more than five. So if they play an Eliath into that lane, hoping that they're going to get you that way, your sunspot just beats them. So a lot of times they can't even play Eliath to beat you. There's just a lot of really good tools this deck has into the top uh, strategies right now in the metagame. And you'll see in the, the deck highlight or the, the game highlights that I beat all these decks, Galactus, Ramp, um, Loki, I just crushed them. So this is a very strong deck for the current metagame. I highly recommend trying it out. So let's get into some key combos here for the deck. One of the reasons, or one of the cards that people question a lot in this deck or ask W a lot about, I saw in his comments even, was Medusa. Medusa into Storm is just a crazy powerful combo. Is going to win you a lot of games just because contesting 7 power, then you get to add, say, a Cyclops. That lane is just one. They're just not going to be able to come back on that lane. You don't need Juggernaut. You don't need some sort of fancy thing to make that lane strong. You already have it because you had Medusa, a five power on two, two that they can't manipulate. 
and then storm on turn three into something like Cyclops, and that's that's just enough. Always try if you can to the storm the set up the Medusa and the storm combo. It's very good. Now it's probably worse now that people are aware of the deck and can probably play around it, but it is still strong. And even if they know it's coming, a lot of times they they don't have the power to contest it. So. Just keep that in mind. Storm Cyclops, that's a classic one. People know this one from back when this was a, a, a major meta deck. Turn three Storm, turn four Cyclops just makes it very, very hard for them to put down enough power. It doesn't get erased by the Cyclops triggering on their stuff. It's very, very powerful just because they tend to want to try and beat you in that Storm lane and Cyclops just says no. All right. Uh, Jeff and Doom and Storm is the other combo. So obviously a lot of your game plan in this in this sort of deck is making sure you win that Storm lane and then can win another lane pretty easily. So having Jeff and Doom to add power to the Storm lane later is very, very powerful. So keep that in mind as well. And then obviously the last combo I wanted to go over is the um, just the turn five wave into Doom or Hulk. The nice thing about the nice thing about wave on five into Hulk on six is that that grows your Hulk an extra turn because obviously Hulk now costs four instead of six. So you get that extra trigger on the last turn to grow him by a little bit more power. Basically your overall game plan is always just storm them on one lane and then win the other lane with Hulk. And it, a lot of times that's just enough, you know, and if that's not necessarily enough, you can sort of use your one drops to contest all three lanes and then play wave on five, grow your sunspot a little bit, grow stuff with Misty Knight, and then you play doom on the last turn and that gives you power in all three lanes and it just becomes very very hard for them to keep up so let's go over basic snap snapping strategy for this deck uh i personally really like snapping if i have like say sunspot into misty knight in hand to start i think that's a very strong a very very strong snapping uh hand as long as you know your opponent isn't running killmonger obviously if killmonger is in their deck that no longer becomes a snap. An early storm curve is another great hand to snap. Obviously, like Nebula is also very good with storm. So like a Nebula into storm hand is pretty strong. A, uh, a Medusa into storm hand is pretty strong. These are sands you can snap very easily. Against the Loki decks and stuff like that, wave into doom is a really nice combo that you should watch out for. You can definitely, definitely get a lot of wins just by scamming them out with that. Just keep in mind, if they do play Loki, that they also might have a Doctor Doom. That's a mistake I've seen a lot of my opponents make, is that they forget, you know, when I'm playing Loki, that I can steal their their big endgame threat. So Wave is not necessarily a an auto win if you're not already ahead. So, like, obviously, like, I'm not saying every time you have Wave turn five, Doom turn six, or Wave turn five, Hulk turn six, that you should just snap. No. Like, obviously, use the context of the game to make these decisions as well. But if you are ahead and you Wave, a lot of times that's just going to be a win. So just uh, just try and plan for that. Um, but like I said already, Medusa into Storm is a really good hand to snap. And then Storm, and then an early, like when I say early Hulk, I'm not talking about like playing Hulk early. <laughs> like I'm not talking about wave into Hulk on four. I What I'm talking about is an early Hulk in hand. So just keep in mind with the change to Hulk now, he doesn't grow automatically. He has to be in hand or on the board in order to grow. So when I say Storm plus an early Hulk, what I mean is you have a Storm set up where you can get up, you can probably win a lane with Storm, like Storm into Cyclops, and you have an early Hulk in hand that's going to be 1820 power. That is going to win you another lane 90% of the time. You know, that's just a very, very strong uh, turn six play. So plan for that, snap for that. I think that's a, a worthwhile hand to snap. It's going to win you a lot of games. Replacements are a lot easier for this deck because most of the deck is very, very cheap it's like you know very early pool cars and then like you got high evo i guess is the only car but then if you don't have a evo you just can't run this deck so i'm not really going to go over replacements for that uh jeff i honestly don't know let me know in the comments if i see i need to keep including jeff i know he was just featured in a spotlight cash so if most of you have him now uh you know i'll, I'll start focusing on other things but i didn't want to go ahead and go over jeff jeff in this deck can be a night crawler i don't love night crawler personally as the replacement because you know honestly like you're already weak to killmonger with this particular build so i would recommend subbing in something like armor luke cage for the either the mirror matches or for some of the other decks running around uh for or for shadow king uh cosmo is another good one because you don't just don't have that many on reveals like you have wave and dr doom but you can play around that obviously with uh your um with, with your sequencing and where you play your cards something like that would be really good here uh medusa is honestly the biggest big big one right like if you're running into a lot of destroy decks or just a lot of decks running killmonger 
I highly recommend swapping out Medusa for armor because armor lets you set up a lane with a couple one drops that are going to scale really high. And then that makes that lane very easy for you to win. And then you also can, then you also just can win another lane with a cult or something. So I, I think armor is the most obvious replacement for some of these cards. So that's what I would recommend putting in, but also Cosmo and all that is obviously just fine. So that's what I would do. And uh, that's really all I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all the, the support I've been getting lately. We're getting really close to a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet already, please subscribe. It helps me out so much. Once I hit the thousand subscribers, I can monetize my channel, which just really helps me out tremendously, allows me to do more content, invest more time into this. So I'm really, really trying to get to that threshold. Thank you so much for helping me out. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Enjoy the games. Yeah, and then like waiting at to just to get in for like five, six hours and then not actually getting in. All right, I think the first turn we don't float. And we'll play Misty in their turn two. Sweet. Look, we got the Hulk buff anyway. I think we snapped this, right? We're in like such a commanding position here. I think if they want to stay in this game, they're going to need to pay for it. Yeah, that's exactly right, Jay. It was a horrible experience for everyone involved. It was not good. Sure. I mean, we just do mid, right? This gives us... They're going to lead her, right? Do we care if they lead her? They have. What if we play a sunspot? <laughs> Is that too big brain? I think I'm fine if they lead her. Oh, look, they had a Dr. Doom too. I actually think it's just too cute to do this. Like, they can't beat this lane anyway. We should just do this. Wakanda forever. All right, so assuming their play is to Arnim Zola mid, we don't beat it in two lanes, though, do we? We can't uh, we can't Hulk left anyway. I'm thinking about floating six and moving Jeff right. That puts us to 18, 21 right and gains us three left. So 17 that doesn't win left. If they hit the doom, they get 10 power mid. I think this is the play. Yep. Wakanda forever. We win on tiebreakers. Victory. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. OTA is a strictly numbers patch. You have to wait for the bigger patches for them to do like actual like snow guard type changes, I guess is what I would say. Yep. That's actually really nice because now I get to play Cyclops and get the buff. Are we trying to challenge a collector? I guess so.
Oh, I should have played it here. I can't move Jeff over here. They're playing around wave with this, but it... Yep, he kind of played right into my hands, right? GG! is pretty annoying we just need one game them not to have a electro and we'll be fine i don't think they can beat us if they don't have electro they're not even running chavez which is insane to me yep they didn't have it i think this is the game chat they're gonna go for like a stupid galactus play here So we just need to play Doom and beat them in all three locations. Wakanda forever. Yeah, I think we just Doom, right? Just to make sure they can't like cheese a Galactus here. Doom wins, yeah. Yeah. They tried. Got him. Victory. Galactus and then Eliath on Rickety Bridge won me a game earlier. Oh, that's gross. Boom, baby.